Oh, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of Back Your Play with Q. I'm your host, as always, Rich Quinones. Don't forget, you can follow us on Spotify, Amazon Music, as well as Buzz Brown, and of course, the YouTube channel, Rich Q and Q, powered by our good friends over at Fresh Roasted Coffee. Use the promo code in the show notes below. 20% off BYP20 with your first purchase. Also, we are powered by Play It Again Sports, Acorn to Oak, for all your digital branding and marketing needs. Our good friend Lloyd Vance, kind enough to join us, host of Lloyd Vance's Insider Football and Sports Radio, 1029 FM, the game Monday nights, 8 to 9-ish, and he joins me during the week on BYP, as well as the drive with Q. Week one in the books, and uh, let's kind of work our way backwards. I mean, the Jets now, the Jet fan are talking about moral victories because Aaron Rodgers was able to make it out of a game last night on Monday Night Football in a game in which San Francisco dominated both sides of the line of scrimmage, ran the ball with effectiveness. Purdy doesn't make mistakes. No CMC. They get to win over the Jets. They put up 30 plus on Monday Night Football, and that's a good start from San Francisco. But let's start with the Jets, right? Because here's a head coach in Robert Salah that we've talked about for so many years now. If they're going to win, they're going to win in spite of Robert Salah. So what did you see from Aaron Rodgers? And then what about the head coach? Well, Aaron Rodgers did, did what he could. I know the line was having some problems with, in terms of their blocking. There was some pressure on him. Uh, he At his age, 40, you know, he's trying to get the football out of his hands very quickly. Uh, the thing is with that offense, I didn't think that they established a run enough. You know, not enough touches for Hall in terms, in my opinion. And then Rodgers did have some throws to Wilson. But he really didn't make his bones in this game until late, throwing it to Lazard. So he had some difficulty getting the ball out of his hands. And then you talk about the Niners. That, that was surprising to me, Q, because I thought the Jets' defense would put up a better effort. As you said, Robert Slaw, that's his calling part, is his defense. And they're going back to the place where he was originally the coordinator there with the Niners. And they could not stop um, Jordan Mason. You know, it, uh, He was running up and down the field on him. Backup running back, he put up some huge yards. That offensive line was dominant. And you think about, you know, Trent Williams, they had to sign him. He's 36, misses all camp, comes in there, doesn't miss a snap, doesn't allow pressure. And then you talk about Purdy, he was getting the ball to all his weapons when they were passing the football. So good, solid effort for the Niners. Yes, they probably want to cut down on a number of the field goals that they had to kick and convert some of those into touchdowns. But overall, great effort. And, uh, Good way to start season for them. Yeah, I know. Hassan Reddick, uh, again, uh, last night, losing a substantial amount of money uh, for the Jets. But, you know, it's just one of these certain cases. Um, we talked a lot about the Eagles and the Packers on the drive, and we mentioned a lot of the games going in to week one. Uh, let's start with kind of the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, I thought the good, look, Dallas got the win on the road against Cleveland. San Fran got the win. Uh, the Eagles got the win in Brazil, New England Patriots, right? I mean, I don't know if that's more of an indictment on Cincinnati than it really is on what the Pats were able to do. Um, obviously, they probably busted a lot of um, brackets by that win, but give uh, Gerard Mayo and give the Patriots um, some credit. They probably had arguably the best win of the weekend. I don't know. The, the, uh, new coaches were three and five, so a lot of them – did their job, like Mayo, you're saying he did, that was a good surprising win for the New England Patriots. That was the survivor pool but bracket buster. Unfortunately, I got caught up in that. But it it when you look at the other side of that, the Bengals just didn't show up, Q. You know, they had difficulty the whole game. And and I think Moss and, and their other running back, they could not find any space. They couldn't really get the ball to Jamar Chase and Burrow just did not look comfortable in this game and defensively. They weren't getting after the quarterback, which was surprising because we talked there all along about how the Patriots offensive line was one of the weakest out there. But they did a great job in terms of they were mauling up front. That Ramondre Stevenson had over 100 yards rushing. They effectively moved the football. And that defense is better than people think with Christian Gonzalez and some of the other playmakers they have. So good win for them. Uh, that was impressive. Also, you have to talk about the Eagles, what they did on Friday night. You know, I'll, I'll lump that into the weekend. Uh, it, it was a solid effort for them. Yes, Jalen Hurts probably wants some of those throws back that he missed. But uh, I thought overall they did a nice job. And particularly, Zach Bond was everywhere for them defensively. So there, there are a couple uh, games and players that you have to call out from this weekend. Steelers look like they're going to go back to fields. We'll get into that in a little bit. Buffalo, I mean, look, we liked Arizona. 
on Friday's edition of The Drive. They covered Caleb Williams, eh, defense, special teams bailed him out. Uh, Texans and Colts was a really good game. Uh, Miami squeezed one out. We'll get into that as well. You know, Saints put up a lot of points, right? So we know about some of the good, and then you got some of the bad. And and again, you know where I'll go with the ugly, but as far as the bad, Carolina just didn't even show up against New Orleans. And listen, you never want to start the season 0-2. And when I say panic and the barometer and the temperature, whether it's 6.5, 7, 7.5, not so much that Carolina is going to struggle again this year because I think they will. My concern now is the quarterback. Like, did you make the right pick at number one when you drafted Bryce Young, right? So it's like, all right, do we give him a full season, quarter of a season, half a season? But you give up 47, you lose 47 to 10, you look like Derek Carr is turning back the clock, slinging it all over the place. They got some problems. Yeah, and and and, and you're right, 0-2 – you know, it makes it tough one to, to win from there. So a lot of these teams got to pick it up. And, and uh, we'll talk about the week two de- teams going into the week. But you're right. When you look at Bryce Young, it's it's wow. They made a mistake. You know, and he's just not seeing the field. His numbers were terrible in this game. Uh, like you were saying, is it are the Saints that good or is Carolina that bad? I tend to lean towards Carolina is that bad because when you just looked at the overall product that they were putting out there, offensively, Miles Sanders couldn't get going. Uh, Bryce Young couldn't even complete half of his passes. It was just an ugly situation for them. So he was 13 of 30, Q, were 161 yards, two interceptions, no touchdowns. And you're just like, okay, yeah. It, you always try to give benefit of doubt to these young guys. and But he's just a guy – he had all those five-star athletes yep. around him in Alabama that helped him win the Heisman. And pro football is hard. And, and you know, I don't know if it's a frame. He's kind of slight, you know, but it, it's just not working. And David Tepper is an impatient owner there. So Canales Correct. is coming in. Hopefully they can fix that situation. But uh, the other side of it, the Saints, you know, I know it's Carolina, but the Saints look good. They were moving that ball up and down the field. Uh Rashid Jaheed busted it open on the first play, pretty much of the game. And then he had Carr, 19 of 23, 200 yards, three TD passes. And it was a laugh for it. And so, you know, it, hopefully Carolina can pick this up, but I, I don't see it getting any better, Q. Tuesday edition of BYP with Q powered by Fresh Roasted Coffee Plate against Sports and Acorn to Oak. Lloyd Vance, kind enough to join us. Uh, Tampa Bay, that's a real impressive win over the commanders, right? The rookie quarterbacks, Williams, struggled. Bo Nix, ill-advised pass. But, you know, you can work with that in Denver. Uh, and then, of course, Jaden Daniels with Washington. And then that goes to the ugly. And, I mean, look, I, I got to go to my Giants. I mean, they in a game where you had to get some pass rush and pressure against Sam Darnold to mask that secondary. I don't want to hear about a Dory Jackson make a play on the ball. Uh, you know, the run, the, the the ground game did nothing. They couldn't stop the run. They let Darnold go, what, 12 of 12 to start the game. He looked like Joe Montana slinging Sammy Darnold. Once the Giants got the turnover and couldn't convert that into a touchdown, same old story. And then, of course, Daniel Jones had a really bad game. That's probably ugly as a loss to open up a season, to start a season or early on in a season for the Giants as a Giant fan that I can recall, and I've seen some really bad football over the last 10-plus years. Um, I know you caught a little bit of the show yesterday, but I'm over Daniel Jones. I'm over Brian Dable. I'm over Mara. I'm over Joe Shane. Uh, I think it's going to be a total rip-down, tear-down, rebuild. I mean, Lawrence can play. Where was Thibodeau? Did they even try to get high and into the offense? Where was Burns? He was your big acquisition in the offseason. Uh, it's just a not even a bad loss. It was just a bad just an overall poor performance losing to Minnesota 28 to six. Right. You talk about, you know, three points in the first pass, three points in the second half, not, not much in between. And, you know, Daniel Jones, it's just a bad investment. They put all that money into him too. And, and he's just not going to get done at this point. You feel bad for Malik neighbors. He, he was trying his best out there. Uh, but Jones 22 of 42, 186, two interceptions, no touchdowns. And, there's just no hope. You hate to say after week one, you know, you don't want to make those season long 
assertions off week one, but I think it's going to be a tough season for the Giants. But what difference does it make if they go out and he plays well and they beat Washington? They're not a good team. They made all these moves that gave you the idea, the perception was they're making a run here, but with what? And look, I don't care if Saquon Barkley scored three touchdowns against the Philadelphia Eagles. It was the right business move to make because we know eventually Saquon's going to get banged up and he's going to miss a couple games. But the Giants, after Washington, you got Cleveland, you got Dallas, Seattle, Cincinnati, Philly. You don't get a win this week. You're staring down the barrel of 0-4, 0-5, and, and, and and they're going to bench Daniel Jones. They're going to bubble wrap him so they don't have to pay him in case he gets injured. I won't see the situation get any better. And as you said, it could be a tear down because, you know, when a quarterback's playing that bad and you've decided to invest in him like you know, uh, Shane did, and they all done. They put their eggs in his basket. There's nobody behind him because it's Drew Lock. We already know what he brings to the table. There's just not a lot there for the Giants. It, I, it's a long season, 17 games, but I think it's going to get longer. And then you talk about that defense. Uh, there was just not a lot of pressure. Sam Darnold looked comfortable back there, 19 to 24. I know he only threw for 208 yards, but he had two touchdowns, and uh, he was getting the ball to Jefferson, and Jefferson got a touchdown as well. So. Uh, it's a tough one, but they're, they're going to have to regroup. And I, I feel for big, uh, big blue fans out there. <laughs> I have no comment on that. A hey, uh, Tuesday edition of BYP with Q, Rich Canoon and Sarah Lloyd Vance, kind enough to join us. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Rich Q and Q. Also, BYP, all the audio uploaded, part of SR1029 FM, the game, Coastal Sports Network, Amazon, and Spotify, and Podcaster as well. Um, Daniels, Knicks, Williams, who would you say had the best pro debut? Well, you know, Caleb Williams gets the W, but he only threw for 93 yards, But and they scored on a pick six and a block punt. Uh, it's good that he got the win because we know that uh, rookie quarterbacks, first-round rookie quarterbacks, had not won a game since, uh, like, 2021. And then overall first-round quarterbacks – uh, which Caleb Williams is, they had not won since David Carr way back That's in the right. day. So, uh, so it was a good win for him. Uh, I was impressed with Jaden Daniels. You know, he was making plays out there. Q, that was a good game, entertaining game against Tampa Bay. Uh, you see he can make some plays with his legs. He had 88 yards rushing. Uh, you would hope that he learns to slide. He was doing some kind of barrel roll type of thing. And uh, not having his helmet buckle was another thing I saw with him. But uh, he looks like he's going to make some plays. So I would say Daniels had the best um, debut of all. Then Bo Nix had a pretty good competitive game against Seattle, but he did make some throws he'd like to have back. So I'll go with Jay Daniels. Look, we know in the NFL, Lloyd, especially when you go against really good offenses, when you get in the red zone or the green zone, as Coffin used to say, you got to score seven, right? You got to get six. You can't go field goals. We saw that in Sunday night, Detroit and the Rams. I mean, the Rams weren't moving the ball, but settling for field goals, you got to be able to punch it in. Um, you look at the NFC North, Detroit gets to win 26-20. You look at the makeup now with the NFC North. I still don't think Minnesota is going to be a player. I don't think Chicago is going to be a player. But the question is now, with Jordan Love going down for Green Bay, does this really make the path that much more easier for the Detroit Lions? It kind of solidified them, you know, too, in that top spot. And they're a good, tough, aggressive team. They can beat you a variety of ways now. They have Williams getting the ball down the field. They're going to Monroe, St. Brown. They can just out physical you as well because that offense line, Panay Soul and the rest of those guys, they can run it down your throat. So they're a very dangerous team. Jared Goff was efficient in this one, 18 to 20, 217. He did have a pick. And he also threw for a touchdown. And you're right, their path is a little bit easier because even though the Vikings won, I still expect Sam Darnold to kind of make some mistakes out there and and not much. And and Jordan Love, that that injury is probably going to keep him out five to six weeks. We, we're we not sure what Malik Willis is going to bring to the table. They're going to have a difficult time with him as quarterback. And in Chicago, you saw, yeah, yeah, they're a scrappy bunch, but they have that young quarterback and they're still learning. So D- Detroit, my, my Super Bowl pick out of NFC is looking pretty good right now. I want to spend a little uh, time on uh, the uh, Tyreek Hill situation in a moment, but uh, game ball and lackey um, game ball. I, I, I have an idea. I think where you're going with game ball. And I thought the best quarterback play of the weekend was Baker Mayfield. It's not Baker Mayfield. And you're going to be like, Oh, wait, 
I gave the game ball to Eagles running back Saquon Barkley. He was explosive. Yeah. 24 rushes, 109 yards, two TDs rushing. He had two receptions, 23 and a TD. First Eagles player making a debut to have three touchdowns in one game since T.O. way back in the day in 2004. Against, and by the way, against the Giants, Owens did that. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, he was explosive. And, and that offensive line, the thing is, Mekhi uh, Becton, who we've killed over the years when he was on the Jets, he was just mauling at that guard position. So they were running behind him and Lane Johnson and, you know, Saquon Barker's benefactor. So I gave him the game ball. A lot of other guys you could have possibly given it to. Uh, Boswell with those six field goals, three of them over 50 yards was a good week as well, but I did give it to Saquon. Disgraceful. Then I guess you gave the lackey to Daniel Jones. Come full circle. I did not. And and you talked about the good, bad, ugly. The ugly quarterback has got to be Deshaun Watson from the Cleveland oh, Browns. You know, what? we have to talk about pathetic. that for a moment. Yeah, forget forget you know, this. Not to interrupt you. Forget the stats yeah, for right. a moment. That's that's got to be the worst case of buyer's remorse. I mentioned this yesterday on the drive. Like you mm-hmm. wake up, you're a Giants fan. Imagine waking up and being a, a Browns fan with Deshaun Watson. He just he's horrible. Terrible. He he really is, and and. I, I think you're right. You said it's maybe Jameis time. You talked about that before week one. And, and, you know, it's just a matter of time where they have to bench Watson. Now they're still going to have to pay him. But this is probably looking like the worst trade situation since that Herschel Walker deal that helped the Dallas Cowboys way back in the day. 24-45 for only 53%. 169 yards passing. One TD, two interceptions. He was sacked six times. And they look the Browns lose at home 33 to 17. They were embarrassed by the Dallas Cowboys. They only had 230 yards all overall. And Q, yeah, you talk about buyers and worse. If they want to cut him, they're going to have to eat 172 million in dead cap space, which you just can't do. They're going to have to keep him on the roster. And it's just an ugly situation. But, you know, Barry, who's the general manager there, and Jimmy Haslam, the owner, they, they, they set themselves up for this situation because they wanted Watson so bad. It's a fair point. And on the day, the morning where Dak gets paid, he performs well. And, you know, Dallas for one week, you know, for one week, looks like, uh, you know, a uh, very good, formidable team. We'll we'll preview week two later on in the week. All right, I want to get to a couple of things. Uh, this Tyreek Hill situation, I know there's a bunch of schools of thought. You know, the speeding, the citation, not rolling the window down. Were the Miami PD too aggressive? He gets stopped a couple miles away, uh, blocks away from Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, you know, I, I mentioned this yesterday, and, you know, I always say full disclosure, having law enforcement in a family, my father was a cop for 20 plus years and a detective. He would always tell me, you just shut up and do what the cop says, even if he is being a prick. Now, with that being said, I think, my opinion is you had a situation that the fact you got the tinted windows, you got the speeding, you never know who or what's in the car, roll down the window, put the window back up, not rolling it down, mouthing off to the cop, the cop getting chippy, then the cop pulling him out. It escalated. I thought both parties were at fault. I would have liked to saw a little calmer demeanor and patience from the cop, but you know, for him to go out afterwards and put up the numbers that he did, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. Um, I don't want to say unfortunate situation because this happens way too many times in present day. But I mean, it's just once that body cam video comes out, which it has, then people can make their own opinion. They can draw their own conclusions. Um, but what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, it's, you know, I think it is unfortunate. It, it's just something that's like, wow. You know, and, and we see this go on all the time in the United States. And, and he said, he's like, what if I wasn't to retail? Maybe it, could, it may have ended another way. Good thing it yeah. didn't. You know, like you, I'm a law enforcement kid. You know, I followed 48 years. He was in the business. And, and so I understand there's two sides to the whole thing. And it's like, okay, um, you, you wish it had turned out different. But as you said, as as the, all the news comes out, you know, with the body cam and, and, and people are going to, there's going to be a lot more to this investigations, et cetera. And then you have these athletes, you know, Tree Kill, he's got a ton of money. He's got Drew Rosenhaus on his side and they're going to do their own investigation as well. Now you, you do tip your hat to him after all that, he was able to go out and play in that game and he played very well Q. you know, that 80 yard bomb 
broke that game open. Very close game. Jacksonville played pretty well. And, you know, Miami kind of was struggling at certain points. But then Miami pulls it out 20, 20 to 17. I needed that Hopefully. game to go into overtime, by the way. Not the three and a half. Not the field goal, but just go. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and hopefully that community kind of pulls together and and they work this out. But, yeah, it, it was an ugly situation. And, and hopefully uh, they can come together. He he did say, you know, what he thought maybe it was just that one individual police officer. He kind of had beef with him or something like that. So we'll, we'll see how it all comes out. But uh, there are going to be a lot of talking heads going on and on about that thing. Yes. Uh, and then lastly, Tom Brady's broadcasting debut. I mean, if you never really listened to Brady for more than five minutes, you'd be like, I, I, I didn't think he really sounded uh, like that. I mean, he's got to grow into position, right? He'll he'll learn as a broadcaster to finish his thoughts, to convey his thoughts um, and not pause mid sentence. Miles Garrett, you got to double team him. He's a game wrecker. So so what? Like so. Like, I mean, everyone's, listen, Brady got paid to 300 something on million ridiculous because of who he is, period. He's Tom Brady, MVP, face of the franchise, face of the NFL for 20 plus seasons, Super Bowl winner, arguably the greatest quarterback that'll go down in the history of the NFL. Um, so yeah, you know, good for him, man. Um, I'm not as overly critical as other people are. No, uh, you know, Q, and he's going to have that bullseye on his back. As you said, they paid him to be the highest announcer out there, and he's not going to be John Madden in his first week. And and, and I did listen to some, and he was kind of choppy at certain points. And, and, you know, he was he did get some of his points across here and there, but it's a job I've heard and talked to some guys he's willing to work at. So that's the most important thing. You know, trust me, they're going to make him look in the best light. They're going to work with him. During the week, you know, he'll probably sit with Joe Buck and Troy Aikman and those guys, and they'll try to, you know, teach him on the job. But it, it's not easy going in that booth, and you see a lot of these former athletes give it a try, and they have difficulty. You remember Emmett Smith trying to do it, you know, and not to call out some guys, but he he was one of them. And, and there's always been a plethora of guys that got behind yeah. that mic, and they, they saw, holy moly, this is a tough job. Now, 100% last word to uh, Lloyd Vance. Give him a follow on X at Lloyd Vance. And, of course, host of Lloyd Vance's Insider Football and Sports Radio 1029 FM, the game every Monday, uh, 8 to 9, ESPN NFL Network contributor, Black College Football Hall of Fame selection committee, and, uh, of course, former writer, researcher, storying as well. Knows the sport like the back of his hand. Always kind enough to join us on BYP with Q, as well as the drive later on the week. We'll start to dive into week two lines and then football Friday frenzy. We'll have Lloyd back on and we'll um, do a deeper dive in some of these um, odds and storylines week two. We're going to blink. It's going to be four or five weeks in and we'll know one thing. Striper season right now is still hot where I am, which means I don't have to endure four or five bad weeks of Giants football. Um, my friend, I always appreciate you jumping on board. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on.